Hello and welcome to Wild Owl TV. It's been a while since I posted, but I thought I must get um, one of these video diaries done. So let me update you on what's happening in the garden. So as you can see, the pond is very, very established at the moment. Um, I've got um, my annual issue with, um, I think we call it Spirogyra or something like that, this, uh, this uh, blanket weed. Uh, there's not a lot you can do about it, um, but this year I've been running this um, uh, recirculating pump just to try and get a little bit of uh, oxygen into the water, um, which um, hopefully is helping. Um, and as I say, there is lots of things happening in the pond. Now, I haven't really had the time to um, spend trying to uh, capture every thing that's been happening um, but let's sort of take a little bit of a, uh, a tour around now as far as the bird tables go well of course <coughs> excuse me I've got, <laughs> got a chest infection as well so you have to excuse me for uh, coughing every now and then I do apologize for that um, the feeding stations I'm still feeding I feed through the year but I'm feeding seed um, mostly and of course the birds aren't taking um, much of it but it is useful um, supplementary food um, and um, also um, the odd uh, fat block um, which on this particular fat block I've actually put some chili powder I don't know if you can see that chili powder is really really good for keeping the squirrels off of the fat block and the birds don't mind the borders haven't been uh, doing too well um, that particular border um, is supposed to be having cosmos in it um, the nasturtiums well they've been blighted with black fly uh, this year but of course because of the dry weather it's been very very difficult to uh, keep these plants alive and as you can see um, the uh, they're not done doing too well these here you can see where it's full of black fly um, but there has been a bonus to that in that um, there's been ladybird larva feeding on the black fly but these um these plants unfortunately aren't actually offering the food I was hoping they were going to offer for the white butterflies, the um, small white and large white butterflies. Um, I always plant nasturtiums uh, for uh, those butterflies because obviously they lay their eggs on them and then it becomes a food plant for the caterpillars. But because of the fact that these nasturtiums have been just drying out and really not doing very well, it's meant there's actually not um, food plants for these caterpillars. And as a result, um, that's going to have an impact, ironically, on the white butterflies. Although, at the moment, there's plenty of white butterflies flying around the garden. Um, now, these also are just very, very dry in full sun. Got a very interesting little uh, animal there on the... Uh, so many different insects. I wish I had the time and, well, more like the energy to, um, uh, to photograph all the different types of insects I've been seeing in the garden. It's fantastic. But this is an organic garden. Now, looking along the... Um, solitary bee habitats once again I'm a little bit disappointed I was hoping I'd get a lot more um, in there you can see just there that there's um, a leaf cutter bees gone in there and same here and the red masons with the um, with the soil there they've been quite busy in that particular habitat um, quite a lot of med red mason activity a couple of months ago um, but not so many leaf cutters now whether that's because of the extreme conditions I don't know um, but um, haven't had as much um, of those holes filled as I would have liked now this is um, a plant which I've put in this year called bird's foot trefoil and it's a very very good plant for wildlife um, and in fact, I think that's why you call it bird's foot trefoil. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like a bird's foot, doesn't it? Um, and um, this plant, I've noticed just now, there was a holly blue butterfly on there. And it's a very, very good plant for wildlife. Um, and along this, this is my sort of wild, uh, wildflower area here. Um, and of course, because again, the extreme weather, um, it really has affected the uh, flowers and the productivity um, which in turn has had a knock-on effect but there is still lots of um, insects around this area particularly moths at night um, these are a variety this is like wild flowers here um, and um, oh there we go there's that little um, holly blue butterfly just coming in now as i speak to you can you see him down there so you can get him on camera Where are you? there you go, there you go. Let's come back a bit. Beautiful. It's not blue. This is a female, I believe. It's um, 
actually quite brown. I thought it was a moth when I first saw it, but that's on the bird's foot trefoil. I wonder why. The reason is because it's a wildflower. It's a native plant and it's drawn the attention of this beautiful little butterfly. A eh? little tiny small butterfly. But that butterfly knows what this plant is and that's what exactly what it wants. This is the, one of the benefits of planting native flowers in your garden. Forget all those fancy cultivated varieties, get native plants. This might not look quite so nice, but trust me, it will bring in the wildlife. So that's really nice that we managed to uh, capture that um, butterfly. And all around, these are the wildflowers here. And as I'm talking to you here, you can see there's a hoverfly or some sort of solitary insect on, on that flower here. This is wildflowers um, that I've planted. And it's just alive with strange looking insects, hoverflies, stuff. I don't know what they are, but it doesn't matter. It's wildlife. And it's so Budlia is coming out now. That's attracting all sorts of um, butterflies. Um, and um, it's not uh, in full bloom yet, but I'm hoping that that will uh, continue. But once again, what's happening in the garden is these flowers are, um, they're almost flowering. And within a couple of days, they've gone over just because of the extreme heat. So it ain't gonna be as good a display this year despite my earlier efforts and um, anyway Budley is a really really good plant the comfrey here has been doing a fantastic job for moths and um, and butterflies um, and um, just over here another fantastic plant which to be quite honest is it does tend to self seed and spread all over but you can pull it out because it doesn't cost any money if you don't want it in a certain place but if you aren't fussed it will fill a welcome space and stop weeds developing. This is borage and borage is constantly full of bees all the time. Really really good. Now a lot of these bees are honeybees um, but the bumblebees go on here as well and there's some more of these um, solitary bee houses and again mostly empty. Um, I don't think it's because of the de design I think it's just just the season. I think they're, they're quite attractive to um, the solitary bees. Um, so there are all sorts of wildflowers. Now what I've done also around the garden is I've put in a cosmos. Cosmos is one of these plants that is um, easy to cultivate. I've grown these myself actually. I'm quite proud of myself. Um, but it's really really good for uh, butterflies and bees and they're dead easy to grow. They're dead easy to look after um, and once they go over you just snip them off like I've done there. Um, and they'll bud again. So this will give a really nice display. And as you can see, my butterfly garden, despite the ravages of this uh, intense summer we're having, is full of insects. And I'm very, very pleased about that. There's another uh, uh, beet bumblebees going on them and butterflies and going on them. And in amongst here, we've got um, uh, wallflower and um, Oh, well, all sorts of stuff. I'm, my brain's a bit stodgy at the moment, I'm afraid. But there's, there's all sorts of things I've put in. And obviously another buddleia there. Um, and some wild poppies here. There's all sorts of wildflowers um, popped in amongst all of these, uh, these varieties. So this has become quite a nice little area. And this is kind of like my area for pollinators. So I haven't seen much of the badgers lately. Um, and under the fence um, over there, as you will remember, that's where they normally um, come and go, where I'm getting a lot of reflection on this screen here. I can't quite see what I'm looking at. Um, but um, they haven't been going under there, so which means they haven't really been coming in the garden. But I mean, that's okay, because I can't really afford the peanuts at the moment. <clears throat> One very, very important thing, I'm sure you're all doing it, is don't forget to keep water out for the birds. And you need to top this up daily virtually and replace it with fresh um, water because they're um, not well in fact not just birds but also mammals will use them so have some water at low level as well as at higher level because um, that's really important particularly in this real hard summer we're having there's a red-tailed bumblebee beautiful going on the uh, there he is there going on the cosmos so a packet of seeds in my little growing tent chuck them out and they're going like Billy at the moment. They seem to be quite hardy as well. So, um, just to take you around the garden, um, the 
Wisteria is not normally one I talk about actually. We've got a wisteria in the garden and uh, it flowered about a month or six, six weeks ago and it's flowering again. Don't understand that. I haven't done that before. This area here is actually home to um, some wood mice and this is uh, the hibernaculum um, compost area. This is actually in shade and it is very dry but regularly um, there are wood mice running around here um, at night so it's a nice little area. When I had peanuts I was feeding them um, but I haven't um, given them any for a little while um, and the wild area here of course is now providing lots of good cover for all the little amphibians coming out of the pond so this is this area here is a very important area the crab apples and um, there's uh, a stand of spartan apple as well this is uh, an eating apple and they're uh, they're coming on they're beautiful apples really enjoy eating those every year and then of course the wildlife area now this wildlife area, um, I've actually um, made a few changes this year because it used to have a lot of borage in it. And since putting the aviary uh, from a tawny owl in this corner, um, I've had to sort of have a rethink on here. And I've transplanted some plants. Now, one of the things I have put in, and it's not looking brilliant at the moment. I've got three of these. In fact, it's not looking very good at all. This is an oak tree. Oak is a fantastic plant. This British oak is about, well, it is the most valuable tree if you like that we have because it's home to so many species and food plant for so many species so that's my little oak tree i've always wanted an oak tree in the garden so i've got that one there and a couple in in some pots it seems to be doing a bit better but then i'm watering the pots um, and uh, not necessarily watering the garden of course because of this drought conditions although i can't, can't say i've been 100 percent compliant under here um is actually that just in there you wouldn't know it but there's actually a mouse nest in there and that mouse is coming and going in that area. And in fact, I looked under here the other day, I was doing some work and a little head popped out. So that is Mrs. Mouse in there. And there's also under this other sheet is another mouse nest. And there's another thing. Oh, somebody just jumped in the pond, which was a frog, I think. <laughs> frog just jumped in the pond. Is that you there? Is that you there? I think it's you there, isn't it? There you go. So uh, he was hiding under there. But th where you see, it's really interesting, that is the mouse nest in there. And the mouse has pulled bits of wood and leaf and stones over the entrance hole. Um, so that, will be ch that would change every day. Every time I look at it, there's different things covering the hole. That's just making sure she has a, well, it's a front door, basically. Um, this little wildlife pond, I cleared out all the yellow flag iris about a month ago because it was absolutely taken over and it is only a small area. So this now is purely for these small froglets and toadlets, although I have seen a couple um, a week or so back, but I have to be honest, I haven't seen many, but you know, these conditions are so extreme. Just have a quick look under these boards. These are all put down for a purpose, these sheets. There's more corrugated here. But I wouldn't normally expect to find anything too interesting under here because it doesn't seem to get used. But once we get into the waterfall area, things get more interesting. So this is the waterfall area now. This is an area which, of course, has a water supply. So the birds visit this. I had a bit of a, um, a clean up yesterday on the pump and um, it was getting a bit over, over, overflowing, over, overgrown rather. So I know that um, the flow now is much better, which is getting more water through. But it's also a place where the slow worms have been showing. Now I was really excited a couple of, uh, well, about a month or so back, because when I lifted this lid, there were three slow worms under here. Now last year, I only ever found one. And I'm quite confident, what's the time at the moment? Usually about this time of day, there's one under here. I haven't looked yet. <laughs> there you go. And this slow worm is a beaut. Look at you. Look at this. So this is a male slow worm. All right, darling. And um, he's a, I'm sure it's the same one. And this is a legless lizard. All right, darling. I'm not hurting you. Oh, he's just, there you go, there's a defence mechanism. He's just pooped on me. All right. So this is a totally harmless reptile. 
Um, it's one of our British reptiles that um, are, well, they're just fantastic predators in the garden. And um, let's see if I can get a better, better. All right, darling. All right. I don't want to hurt you. Spare me a second. There we are. Look at this. Isn't that just fantastic? This animal is poking his tongue out. And like I say, it is totally harmless. Unfortunately, cats often get slow worms. And this slow worm um, is hiding away under the sheet and will be feeding on all sorts of um, slugs and worms, invertebrates, all sorts of things. So it is a very, very valuable thing to have in your garden. And I'm well chuffed because uh, this animal is regularly under the sheet here. And they're cracking. He's just settled down here now. He knows I'm not going to hurt him. So they're not, this is a, a male, I say they're not very big. Um, and um, they go under the corrugated sheet because of the heat. As you can see, the sheet has only got um, uh, this, this plant underneath, but this slow room is living in the waterfall. And um, it is a, a popular place for it. It's basically living its life out here and finding lots and lots of prey, but they do move around. So I'm going to put you back and it will, and I call them slow worms. They're actually, go on then. There you go, look at this. <laughs> They're not that slow. And there we go, he's left me a present, but that's fine. Now there's going to be more than one slow worm in here, I'm sure, because like I say, there was others. Um, but I'm going to put that, uh, he'll disappear back to his cave or wherever he is. My hand's now stinking. Not very pleasant. And that's what that's going to stay like. I don't lift it up very often because I don't want to keep worrying him. I want him to feel safe and secure. But that slow worm has grown. I'm just going to wash my hands out in the waterfall. And of course, having a waterfall in the garden is fantastic. I don't have to think about whether or not I'm remembering to top up the water like many of you would have to do because this is a constant supply of valuable hydration for so many things and not just birds but funny enough lots of insects as well um, and uh, there are wasps just flew off as i zoomed in on him lots of wasps under here uh, in the waterfall area rather um, now this is another sheet i've put down um, again to um, see if i can you know get attract amphibians and um, and slow them when i checked this yesterday there was a slow room under here so let's just see if i have another see anything maybe it was a one i'm fairly certain there's a smaller slow worm i saw under here yesterday and uh, so and i'm confident there's certainly a small population in the garden so nothing there today but the sun's not quite so strong today so maybe that sheet's not warming up as much as our other little friend there is found under the other sheet so the garden well the border across there is um spirea as a buddleia over there, some plants looking a bit worse for wear. Um, but as I mentioned, the pond, well, <laughs> these pond plants are getting plenty of water. Um, and um, in the pond, the pond is absolutely teeming with sticklebacks, absolutely teeming with them. They've done so well this year. Um, and uh, not only that, uh, in fact, you can see the wasps. here and just um, buzzing around this waterfall yeah not only that um, but there's an awful lot of insects since the ducks vacated it's been very obvious how many water pond skaters and water boatmen and things like that I, I've seen so these I wouldn't see any of them um, when um, I first uh, <coughs> was looking for them when we had the ducks here um, so, uh, you know, ducking quacky, you, you, it's lovely to have you here, but, you know, I think everybody else is quite glad that you've, uh, you've left and, and gone your own way. This is um, another little wildflower area, just wildflower seeds I've scattered. Um, they're surviving. Of course, wildflowers are very hardy, um, so even in these conditions, a lot of them can still manage to uh, survive. And I mentioned about the sorts of... Um, insects you get on wildflowers you know there's so many different things that you i see and i just look and i think wow i know what that is and they just you really get such a variety and these are insects which are feeding on the um the nectar that wildflowers produce some of them are uh, laying their eggs in the wildflowers 
um, it's just on another level um, to what we would uh, get from a non-native plant so if you want a good wildlife garden always plant wildflowers you know it just increases the biodiversity in your garden so this area here um, what I try and do is I try and leave margins around the edges of the garden um, it's not always possible to to do it totally because you tend to have a garden that goes a bit out of control but this area here is just perfect for amphibians because they're coming out of the pond and then they've got this long grass um, to kind of hide away in um, and um, you know in amongst here somewhere is going to be lots and lots of little frogs and toads and in fact what I did er early in the season was I put lots of twigs as you can see here and that's now grown up and there's water underneath there and it's just the perfect environment for froglets and young, young amphibians to safely grow and keep away from predators. And then coming across uh, back to the pond, as I mentioned, uh, lots and lots of uh, fish in the pond. Haven't had kingfisher in the pond this year yet. I'm hoping that will happen. Um, but we have had all sorts of dragonflies which is really brilliant. Um, common data, broad-bodied chaser, southern hawker. Haven't seen them more yet. I don't think I've seen them more anyway. Um, but we've got some really nice insects. And like I say, all sorts of weird things. <laughs> um, and even there you can see there's a pond skater. So really, really um, great uh, for having all, have all this, uh, this stuff in the Wild Owl TV garden. So um, I hope that, uh, just zoom this out for you, I hope that um, that gives you an update. As you can see, it really, really um, is a wonderful time of year and there's lots going on. Um, but of course, we're all begging for some rain now. And um, the birds have finished breeding quite a while ago now, quite a few weeks ago. So very little happening with them, but they're still asking me for mealworms. Um, and uh, <laughs> they're still sitting on the fence, even though I've not given them any for about three or four weeks, because there's a national shortage of mealworms. I think it's just beginning to recover, but you can buy them in bulk. Um, but I'm happy about that, because it's costing me a lot of money, as well as the, uh, the peanuts. So this time of year, there's not really the need to feed uh, at the same um, rate as I do prior to them breeding and during the breeding season. We're in the summer. What's happening with the birds now? Well, of course, um, lots of birds now are going into molt. They finish their breeding um, and this is when the adults start to recover. They've still got the fledglings around, um, probably hassling them for food. I noticed just now as I was talking to you, a little robin fledgling went onto the lawn for some food. Um, so there's lots of birds around, but the, uh, in fact, there he is just down there now. Um, there's lots of birds around, um, but um, the uh, youngsters are all going to be, um, oh, that's an adult, isn't it? it was a youngster, but the youngsters are all going to be um, sort of surviving for themselves and um, they're going to be uh, waiting for the challenge of winter, which is going to be the time when they're going to find it quite tough. Um, so in the meanwhile, just going to enjoy the insects. So I'll finish on that note and hope that um, was an enjoyable update for you. Nice to um, see the slow worm. Um, that slow worm's grown about 50% since last year. If it's the same one, I'm pretty certain it's the same one because it's always in the same place. So that's really nice to know that he's, he's, he's there and th there are some girls around for him. I know that because I saw them a while ago. So who knows what's going on underneath that waterfall. <laughs> so thanks for watching Wild Owl TV. I'm sure there's things I should be mentioning um, and I'll do another video post when I'm up to it. Um, but in the meanwhile, let's keep posting interesting things for you to uh, learn a little bit about wildlife um, and particularly wildlife in Yate and Sobbury. So see you soon. Bye for now.